Uh, we have another special guest joining us on the broadcast. Uh, Dave S. Hire, former MLA of Surrey, is live with us. Uh, Dave, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you for being with us today. How do Canadians feel about the fact that no one was truly punished for the 1985 Kanishka bombings? I think Canadians are very upset. Uh, they are not happy that uh, uh, after the 1985 bombing of Air India, that uh, no suspects has been really convicted. Uh, and the two people were charged, uh, Mr. Rapindman Singh Malk and uh, Jeff Singh Bagri were charged, but uh, they were found not guilty. And uh, that does not mean they were innocent, it's just they were not enough proof, beyond reasonable proof for Canadian justice system to convict. And the uh, interesting Indrajit in Singh Riot uh, was charged for making the bomb. He was convicted for killing two baggage handler in the Nuita airport. That's the second bomb that was sent to Canadian Pacific Air, CP Air, to connect with another Air India flight, but it blew up before it was transported to the Air India flight that killed two baggage handle rather than another 329 people. But the first one killed the 329 people, uh, and altogether there were 331 people killed, 280 were Canadian citizens, and over 86 were uh, kids. And uh, everybody's very unhappy. I'm personally very ha unhappy about it. The victim in India, Palmy, are unhappy about it. And so are the, all the Canadians. They think uh, it's sad to see um, after so many years uh, that uh, nobody really has paid the price for the most uh, uh, tragic uh, accident uh, or the bombing or the killing of the innocent people that has happened from Canadian shore with the bomb was made right here in British Columbia, uh, but uh, nobody has been convicted. And this is the largest mass murder in Canadian history before 9-11 uh, through the aviation. Uh, and if you take a look at before 9-11, uh, there was no place, uh, no bomb that had gone in any airline that had killed so many people. Do Canadians, uh, Dave, feel safe with the fact that people who share ideology with the perpetrators of Kanishka bombings are being called Canadian citizens today? Well, I think Canadians just, uh, like Canada is considered one of the best country in the world to live in, to raise your family in. But sadly enough, we have some challenges in our justice system. And uh, our Charter of Rights, which is supposed to protect every single Canadian, regardless who you are, what your background is, what your religion is, what your ancestry is, and it's supposed to treat them equal. But uh, sadly enough, since Charter of Rights has come in, mostly Charter of Rights in Canada has been used by criminals and people who are accrued, uh, accused of crimes, uh, rather than victims uh, or other law-abiding ordinary Canadians. And so Canadians are not happy that our justice system gives more protection to the criminals and accused or murderers or, in this case, terrorists. And they're not happy about it, but sadly enough, our governments over the time has not been able to make the change in the law that will protect the rights of the victims and law-abiding Canadians at least equal to these criminals or if not stronger the rights than the criminals and the accused or terrorists and all that. And that's something I have spoken about for many years. I was MLA for 12 years, 2001 to 2013. Before I was an MLA in the province of British Columbia, uh, from Surrey, I had talked about it. And I have talked about it after I left my position because I did not run in 2013. We decided 12 years was enough for me. And uh, sadly enough, uh, we have different governments come over. Uh, Harper government, uh, that was a conservative party of Canada, they made some changes and uh, some of the laws that they had made uh, Charter of Rights, uh, under Charter of Rights, uh, the Supreme Court of Canada has struck down some of those rules. But I think uh, there's uh, other ways they can get around it. We have uh, enough Charter of Rights notwithstanding clause, which uh, government can pass, and that's good for five years. If they need to, they can renew it again. And sadly enough, no government has used it. Yes. And not, not be sending clause uh, uh, to protect the rights of the victims uh, or ordinary law abiding uh, Canadians. And some provinces like Quebec has used it. Uh, they've been successful using that clause of the Constitution. But federally, they have not used that uh, clause in, uh, in our Constitution of Canada. Yes. And Dave, if ca Canadians do realize the Khalistani extremism problem, do they hold Justin Trudeau and Jagmeet Singh accountable for it? I think Canadians who understand that they hold Justin Trudeau and Jagmeet Singh are responsible for this, 
But the many Canadians, they're so busy with their life, uh, uh, trying to raise their family, trying to work, uh, trying to run their businesses, and to try to go about their life uh, uh, every day. Uh, they don't have time to really think about it. The people who are aware of her, of uh, this, uh, they understand it. And they just, just like uh, at uh, one of the Sikh temples, uh, they had a picture of a uh, Ravindra Singh Parmar, who was accepted as the mastermind in the Air India bombing by, by all of the courts, our Supreme Court of Canada, uh, Justice Major, who did the Air India inquiry. In his report, he said the mastermind was Dalvinder Singh Parma for Air India bombing. And also, uh, when two people were charged, Dalvinder Singh Malk and uh, Jasen Bagri, even the defense has stated in the case uh, and the prosecution, and the judge had accepted that Tilvinder Singh Parma was the mastermind of Air India bombing, yet his picture uh, are both in front of the Guru Nanak Sikh temple in Surrey and also in the backside the entrance to Guru Nanak Sikh temple in Surrey. And uh, if people had tried to put pictures of bin Laden, who was Muslim, did the 9-11 bombing uh, as a hero in front of the, any churches or mosques or other places, I'm sure the Canadian government was shutting them right away. Sadly enough, this guy who were involved with killing 280 Canadian Canadians, 86 kids, and total of 331 people. But he is still shown as a hero uh, by small segment groups. I can tell you in Canada, no more than 10 or 15 percent of the people uh, sport in Kazakhstan who are from Sikh background, at least 90 to 95 percent of the Sikhs are against Kazakhstan. They think if they want Kazakhstan, they can have it, go back to India and deal with it there. It is this is not the place to have it. I mean, Canada is looked at one of the best places in the world to live in. But we have people from all over the world. Most of the people, if they have problems in their own countries, in Asia, Africa, Europe, South America, other part of the world, they leave their problems there and they live together here, respect each other, don't provide hate and violence against each other or speak about hate and violence. And everybody from other part of the world who are in Canada, if they start bringing their problems, this country will not be considered one of the best and safest countries to live in. It will be considered one of the worst countries. But right now, sadly enough, only one group that I know of who's trying to use hate and violence, like some people are speaking about uh, putting videos asking Hindus uh, or Canadian descent, Canadians uh, from Hindu descent to say, go back to India, which is totally wrong. I mean, everybody I talk to, they're against that. Maybe there's a small minority, less than 1%, who might agree with that uh, type of statement. But 99% of the Canadians and the Sikhs and other Indians who live in here, we will disagree with the statement. But you should not be speaking like that against anybody, either Hindus or Sikhs or Muslims or Christians or Jews or people from other religions and other nationality, other background or other religions. Yes, and how is the current tiff with India perceived in Sare and the people of Canada? I think a small number of people in Surrey, British Columbia, where I have lived uh, since 1972, when we used to have only 20% of the population of Surrey, British Columbia, was uh, from Indo-Canadian descent. Right now, we have probably around 35 to 40% descent who are people from Indian descent. And uh, I think most of them uh, are not happy with what happened, how Prime Minister Justin Trudeau bringing, without bringing any of the senior police officer beside him to show the proof, what proof he had, why he was making those type of allegations against India, uh, had those allegations, uh, and that, that has caused a lot of problem, a lot of rift between the Canadian government and Indian government, and ca causing a lot of problems for Canadian citizens who want to visit India. They can't get their visas, and some people want to go there for visit, or weddings, or meet their family, or somebody is sick there, or, or other reasons. And that's causing a lot of problems, but I can tell you, I think uh, maybe 1% of the uh, people in Surrey who are from Sikh background might be happy with that, uh, what the Prime Minister has said. I think the rest of the people are not very happy with it, they're against it. I think uh, uh, if Prime Minister had any proof that India was involved in killing of Mr. Niger, first of all, it is wrong if India was involved with Mr. killing of Mr. Niger, but uh, I haven't seen any proof, neither has anybody else. Even all the leader of opposition um, you know, from the Conservative Party have come out and say he hasn't seen any proof. 
Even the Premier of British Columbia has said that he hasn't seen any proof other than what was stated in the media, which is nothing. And, uh, you know, you can make any, any allegation. You can say um, Mr. Trudeau had ordered the hit and alleged that he did it. Or you can say Mr. Singh, who's a member of a, a NDP party, federally, he did it. That doesn't make it truth, doesn't make it that's the proof. You need to have proof to say somebody was really involved rather than just making some uh, unsubstantiated allegations. And that's so far what the Prime Minister said. There are some allegations he had heard, but he hasn't said what allegation they are and who are the person who brought them, what proof they really have. Because anybody can allege anybody to say somebody walking down the street, you can tell them, or any mayor or premier can be said, talked about and accused of killing somebody. But you really have to have a proof, right? And you can't make statements in public, uh, in public, especially in the Chamber of Commerce, in, a, or in the Chambers in Parliament building, accusing another country of killing Canadian citizens without giving in the proof, without bringing the police. Uh, you know, people don't trust the politician what they make statements about, something they think they're doing for political reasons, rather than um, but the truth is, this is why you need a senior police official who can come out and who go by the law, especially in Canada, judiciary and the police is 100% yes. independence of the prime minister or premier or like a chief of chief minister. So therefore, we trust our police. And then I think uh, the prime minister had to really get the senior officers from the police come back, uh, come out and publicly state what information they have and uh, be able to question by the media and other general public to say, is it really true or is it just allegations? Because allegations can be made against anybody. Uh, now, uh, I would like proof. to ask you, why do you believe Justin Trudeau is calling people who pose with AK-47s and also receive arms training in Pakistan, citizens of Canada? Oh, I have no idea. You have to ask Justin Trudeau. I mean, he seems to have his own logic. And before uh, last Monday, Justin Trudeau was very low in the polls. Actually, if, if the election was held uh, tomorrow or have been held on a Monday, Justin Trudeau seemed like he would not have won many, many se very many seats. He would have lost his government. And uh, Jagmeet Singh, who's the leader of opposition, also is very low in the polling in Canada. And uh, they would have both done terribly in election, even though elections might not be held for another two years from now. And uh, then all of a sudden, Monday, all the story about how the inflation is uh, getting worse in Canada, all the house prices are under uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has more than doubled or tripled. All the rents for people's homes have doubled or tripled. People can't afford to rent homes even students living in Canada, people from Canada or people coming in from new countries, other countries, they can afford to buy a home or rent a home, the cost of food and everything else is going up. Instead of people talking about those questions as they were talking about the, before Monday, uh, after uh, Justin Trudeau, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau made those allegations, all the other issues were taken away. Only thing people talked about are the uh, problems going on uh, in uh, with India, how uh, India tried to hire people or is accused of hiring people to kill uh, Canadians, so which is totally wrong. And then I think uh, politically, Justin Trudeau probably used this to get his polling rating up, but I don't think general public will buy it. The general public want to see the proof. What proof you have to make allegations against anybody in Canada or outside, especially another democracy, which is one of the largest democracy in the world, uh, good friends of Canada for many, many years, for decades. Uh, and uh, many of the Canadians here from uh, Indian descent who respect their country, not everybody has the same feelings, uh, uh, but I think a vast majority of them, at least 99% uh, of Indians who live in uh, Canada respect India, want to have a good relation with India. And I haven't had uh, anybody come talk to me contrary than, than that, other than maybe people who support uh, the terrorist uh, who did the Air India bombing, or maybe who want to have a uh, in as a separate uh, area called Khalistan, India, they might say differently than that. But they, sadly enough, uh, uh, people have come out and said, "Look, why is the government allowing these people to make all these allegations?" But nobody able to support it. Like in Canada, if you want to have independence of Quebec which is the province of British Columbia, like the state of, British, uh, of Canada, 
province of Canada. They wanted the independence of the province. So they had a referendum. At the referendum, referendum failed. They had a choice. But Canada allowed them to have a referendum. And that was people from Canada holding a referendum for, within Canada for Quebec. But the people say, say if people want a referendum in India, maybe they should be holding a referendum in India, not in Canada. Because most of these people who are involved in a referendum, on what I have been told, none of them will go back to live in uh, India after the Khalistan was ever created. Yes. Because they enjoy the lifestyle and, and the way of uh, democracy, the way you can see and okay. do everything. Okay. Okay. My final question now to you: Can Canada afford to lose confidence of Indians living there, who contribute to the Canadian economy for the sake of supporting these people who have, as I said earlier, proven criminal records? I don't think Canada can afford to offend anybody. I mean, look, uh, all the Indo-Canadians are hardworking. They're in every profession, every business, all over Canada. And they're very successful. And Indo-Canadians have lived in Canada for more than 100 years. They help uh, build Canada in British Columbia, yes. where the city of Surrey is. And I think uh, our government has to make sure that they respect everybody. Sadly enough, some politicians, uh, they have a way of uh, trying to divide the community. Like Justin Trudeau has uh, divided the community between two different groups, people who support Khalistan versus not Khalistan. Mm -hmm. I think it's wrong to divide people up uh, different ways. We should try to unite the people. We should be able to find solution. And even uh, we can say, look, if you want the referendum, was Khalistan, uh, it should be done peacefully and respectfully. You cannot use hate and violence uh, and promote hate and violence here okay. or anywhere else, those things, because those are things against Canadian way of life, against Canadian rules, and they should really use all the Canadian uh, legal system to, uh, to okay. prosecute anybody who's breaking the laws that promotes hate and violence regardless of whether it is in Canada right. or David, David, of the thank world. you so much for being with us. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.